Hello students, I am Amani Sharma, your educator. I warmly welcome you all on the YouTube channel where we in today's video are going to put a major focus on the major theorists which are associated with the literary field of Marxism. So in uh, one of the videos we have already discussed about the major tenets of Marxism the introductory phase, what was it, now how those ideas were propelled by other Marxists and all, that is what we are going to see. So I have a list of the complete theorists that are related to the Marxist literary theory that we are yet to cover through this very video lecture. Right? So grab your pen, paper, notebooks, etc. because this video is going to be useful where you are going to get introduced basically to the writers, the theorists of this very theory. So these are the names, Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels, these are the people, specifically if I try to talk about Marx, Marx is one such person from whose ideas this theory has come up. We know him uh, by the works that we call as Das Kapital, the Communist Manifesto, etc. We will be talking about these very works as well in some other video. But for today, just the theorists, the ideas that they hold with some examples from literature, right? So, if we try to talk about Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels, they are the people from where we see the emergence of the Marxist literary theory, right? So, when Marx died, no, some of his works were left unfinished. It was, um, you know, those works were taken up later by Angels, who was working with Marx, and he completed and finished the works. So, because of the fact that Angels also had the same process or point of view as Marx had, during his time, we see the ideas being, uh, you know, going in the same direction as Marx would have wanted them to, right? Then we have George Lukács, Theodor Adorno, Walter Benjamin, Louis Althusser, Pierre Macquarie, Christopher Caudwell, Raymond Williams, Terry Gilton, Frederick Jameson and Antonio Gramsci. If you feel like, you can pause the video here, note the names, but gradually we are going to discuss them in the upcoming slides. So, the very first person that we need to talk about is Marx. He was born on May 5th, 1818 in Rhine province of Prussia, that is in Germany. So, he was a thinker who belonged from, belonged from Germany and he was a revolutionary figure, sociologist, historian and economist. He was one such person who brought the ideas where we see that it is not just the political theory that he is trying to talk about. Uh, Marxism is not just and just economic in nature. Marx ने भी यही idea दिया था कि economy तो है ही है लेकिन whatever material conditions are also there they are going to get influenced by the people who are in power or power is going to influence them vice versa right so he talks about and he says that Marx the ideas that he has Marxism तो later on लोगों ने उन चीजों को coin करा था but Marx he held these views right then we have the second theorist who was a person who was very closely associated with Marx. His name is Friedrich Engels. He was born in 1820 in Germany as well, as was Marx, right? He was a German philosopher, theorist, historian, journalist and a revolutionary socialist who, you know, held the same opinions as Marx did and I already told you, he had a lot works to Marx, especially uh, unfinished short diye the, unko complete karwaya tha, right? Then we move forward to the third figure that is known as George Lukács. He was born in 1885 in Hungary. Hence, he is a Hungarian Marxist. Why have I brought forth here the origins here? Because at times we have seen these things occurring in the examination that they ask the origin of the particular theorist. So, we need to be aware of that particular thing as well. Moving ahead, he is a literary historian, critic and aesthetician. According to Lukács, genres like a novel should uncover underlying social patterns, offering insight into the entirety of human existence with all its inherent contradictions, tensions and conflicts. And I have brought forth certain examples with my own self here where we are going to re, uh, you know, deal with literature at a larger stance. If I try to talk about uh, Lukash here, he, uh, agar main aapko literature mein se example do, then I have a very prominent work which was named by, um, which was, you know, written by Charles Dickens, Oliver Twist. We see that this particular, you know, work here tries to talk about the Victorian society 
as with its good and bad things as well. So Lukash ka manna bhi khud yehi tha that things should be uh, somewhere or the other reflecting the society properly as was uh, Oliver Twist which was written by Dickens in the 19th century talking about the 19th century condition of the poor people, uh, the elite class and so on and so forth. Right? So then we have the next figure who is by the name Theodore Adorno. We are going to deal with these theorists in a greater detail with major works as well. Theodore Adorno was born in 1903 in Frankfurt, Germany as well. German philosopher, he is of course musicologist and social theorist. He now proposed a theory and said what? He said that literature does not directly engage with reality. He endorsed modernism in literature and if we try to talk about modernism, who better than T.S. Eliot and the work Wasteland. The work Wasteland, if you have read you guys know that it, somewhere or the other, tries to talk about the conditions of the society which were there and it talks about that how with modernism, things were fragmented, things were distorted, but people were trying to live and they were lamenting on the things that were happening around the globe because modernism ki time pe hi, majorly we see that other world wars are happening, right? So all these things because of its inherent distancing from the reality. Because reality most of the times is linear. But what if I try to present you something which is absurd in its nature, right? It aims to depict viewing this detachment as enhancing its critical perspective on reality. If we try to talk about why T.S. Eliot's work, The Wasteland, has so much fragmentations in it, because the reality during those times, critically and complexity ke saath, if we try to think, we will come to a conclusion that the reality of those times was also something which was distorted, which was fragmented and all. Right? That's what Theodore Adorno tries to talk about in his work. Moving uh, forward, we have Walter Benjamin, who was also born in Germany in the year 1892. He's a German Jewish philosopher, cultural critic, media theorist and essayist. He is a media theorist. That's why if I try to talk about the music industry, the way if we see somebody producing something, mass production, what is mass production? If people are consuming things at a larger level, people will bring that up time and again. And in um, the example that I'm trying to give you in here is about the music industry, right? Approaching his analysis from a Marxist standpoint, he focused on mass culture and how culture is packaged and consumed by the general population. If you hear the songs of any person, koi famous uh, artist hai, Adele hai, we have other people as well, right? If you hear Harry Styles for that matter, if you read uh, some books, if you listen to some sort of music for that matter, you listen to Aririt Singh, you listen to Preetam Da somewhere, uh, somewhere or the other, because of the fact that is a mass culture, people are liking their songs, so they are producing more songs and songs and songs, right? Taki log un us mass culture ko consume kar sake. The music is packaged and it is consumed by the public. Because of the fact that Benjamin is a media theorist, that's why I'm giving you an example of media only through the music industry, right? Then we have the next theorist who is Louis, who is Louis Althusser. He was born in Algeria in 1819. He is a French Marxist philosopher, attempts to illustrate how ideology operates in society. If I give the example of Althusser, you just uh, take for instance the education system of any area, any country. Whatever is uh, propagated, whosoever is in power, they will try to take care of, they will try to uh, even take into consideration in a powerful sense, they will dominate whatever is being taught in schools, whatever ideology is being perpetually dealt up by people and how teachers, how the principal and other things jo hai school mein wo kaise ideology ko badhaya jai, spread kara jai, wo education system mein bhi dikhta hai. This is what, this is the idea of Althusser, right? Moving forward, I have Pierre Macquarie. He was born in France in 1938, French Marxist and literary critic. He argues that in literature, the form and fiction of a text create distance from its underlying ideology 
and the silences, the gaps that we feel that are there in a text, literary text, serve a dual purpose by concealing and revealing ideological contradictions. If I try to talk about Orwell's famous work, which is by the name Animal Farm, here Orwell has tried to use the form of allegory. Allegorically, Animal Farm may through how the society operates in a real world, usko animals ke through he has tried to signify. And we see that eventually he was trying to critique the Soviet Union for that matter. So he could not critique it clearly. Hence the text is somewhere or the other trying to show us the hidden meaning which are concealed beneath the surface. And if you read it with that critical stance, you will come to know the meaning of the text, right? So what better example than animal farm for the same thing, right? Then I have Christopher Cordwell, who is a British uh, Marxist. He was born in London, UK. Uh, this question can be asked in the net examination that it was a pseudonym of Christopher St. John Sprigg, right? He's a British Marxist writer. What did he do? He explored the relationship between art and ideology, delving into how art serves as both a reflection and a distortion of reality. Now look here at the image that I have brought forth here, the persistence of memory which was painted in the year 1931 by Salvador Dali. He was a painter and 1931 ki modernism hi tha and I told you already in the modernist era things were being fragmented, things were being uh, distorted, things were not being the linear things as we used to see them before. Because already world me chaos macha hua tha. The world wars were happening. People were not sure what's going to happen to them in the next second, right? So they were living with the fragmented self by their own selves as well, right? So uh, look at the image here. We see the clocks are melting here. All the three clocks. This is the painting. I'll write down the name. You can search for it. The painting name is the. Persistence of Memory by Salvador, <clears throat> Salvador Dali. This I think came around in the year 1931. Right? Came around in the year 1931. So what is it showing? It is showing us the concept of time. But the time that is being shown here is a distortion of the reality which somewhere or the other is drawing a parallel between the minds of the people. Ki log bhi distorted lage thi. People were fragmented in their own selves as well. So we see a reflection of the time of modernism and a distortion of the reality as well in the same work which is trying to reflect the reality of those times. Right? Then we move forward to the next writer here, the next critic, very famous, also used, um, you know, in cultural studies as a theorist there. He was also a British Marxist, born in the year 1921 in UK, a Welsh socialist writer, academic, novelist, critic, influential within the new left and wider culture. So when we talk about cultural, uh, you know, cultural materialism, if we try to talk about cultural studies, Raymond Williams is the Raymond Williams is the figure which holds a very prominent place, and every time in net questions in pe aate hain. Now, what was his point of view? You see, every Marxist critic here has a different point of view, and I hope that through the examples that I'm trying to signify or give here, are somewhere or the other telling you the meaning that these people uh, had in their point of views, right? Now, coming here, he undertook a comprehensive historical evaluation of culture and literature within a Marxist framework. He will give us three terms which are there, which are known by the name dominant. Residual and emergent. In every society, there will be a class which, somewhere or the other, at some point of time, will be dominant, will be in power, or a class as yogi which will be losing its power when the dominant will be coming, and the emergent is the one which will be newly emerging to take place of the dominant class. There. These are the things, and if we try to talk about Marxism or Marxist literary theory. It tries to talk about society in that sense only. 
that everything keeps on shifting. Pluritariate will become the bourgeois and the bourgeois might become the pluritariate. So this cycle keeps on moving like this only, right? So this is what he says. And if I try to talk about Williams, uh, this, uh, you know, 19th century, agar baat kare, if we try to talk about the Victorian, English Victorian literature, you see these things happening there. At that point of time, women only had three choices, either to get married, to become a nun or to be a prostitute. So that was a thing which was there in that society, you know, and that thing was being reflected in the literature of that time. If you read any work of that particular time, right? So that is there. Moving forward, we have an ex-writer by the name Terry Eagleton. He was born in 1943 in UK. What does he say now? Let's just look at that. English literary theorist, critic and public intellectual. He argues that texts don't merely reflect reality, but actively shape ideology, creating the impression of reality. This is what he says. Let's just take an example of somebody reporting some sort of news. Koi news reporter, aapke liye news re, uh, you know, report kar rahe. The way they are going to report the news, the language they are going to talk about, the uh, framing of the entire incident, everything, the way it will be advertised on your TV screens, on your phones, mobiles, etc., that is going to shape your point of view. So he says, reality reflect nahi karta hai, but actively shape ideology, how we will view that particular news, right? How the impression of reality would be created? And the news reporters might not be using news reporting. If I am you example, the news reporters, they do not reflect, they don't reflect reality objectively. What is being objective without any biasness? But we have seen that people do do the, you know, uh, People do do that kind of thing where they are being biased towards something, right? And Terry Galton says the same thing. Moving forward to the next slide that we have uh, with the theorist by the name Frederick Jameson. He was born in 1934 in Ohio, USA, that's America. An American literary critic, philosopher and Marxist political theorist. Jameson says that Marxism... He says that Marxism can analyze a literary text politically, revealing its hidden meanings. This is what he says. Take, for example, uh, 1984 by George Orwell. It is something which is reflecting that society and it is saying, Big Brother is watching you. You remember this line from 1984? How the totalitarianism and surveillance, which might be something which will take a toll on us, might be in the upcoming future. So how he tries to portray that thing in his novel 1984, right? This is what Frederick Jameson says and talks about. Then we have the last theorist for today, Antonio Gramsci. He was born in Italy in 19, uh, you know, 1891. An Italian Marxist philosopher, linguist, journalist, writer and politician believed in cultural hegemony where ruling classes maintain power by influencing culture and ideas. Whosoever will come in power. If you elect someone, you know that you have done that intentionally. Now you cannot question that. So whatever he or she will say, you'll have to follow that. That is what is known as hegemony where intentionally you have made somebody come in power. This is what he says and even if we talk about again the example of animal farm by George Orwell, we see how that the pigs, they are elected. There is a ruler where they elect kara jata hai. they take the control of the information that is supposed to be spread. So they are the sole leaders of the information that is being created where we see Snowball also as a character there who might be serving as some sort of transformatory figure because his ideology is also there. Right? Emphasize the role of intellectuals, which is shown through the um, character of Snowball, who was also a pig, but he had some sort of different point of view than the other pigs. Right? In challenging the dominant ideologies for transformative social change. So these were 
different different point of views of different different Marxists as in how do they view reality through the Marxist lens and I hope that things are clear with the examples that I have tried to provide you from literature itself because we are dealing with English literature. Also one important announcement to make that there are um, you know different languages in different languages uh, the videos are available on the Drishti learning application so you can choose according to your own preference whatever you prefer right. Thank you so much for staying here. Have a good day. Bye-bye.